So hello everybody, good evening. Lovely to have you join me for a Friday Yin practice. Um, let's take a little bit of time to just simply settle in. So if you'd like to come to an easy seat of your choice, making sure that you're sitting comfortably so that you have a, a delicate lift up through your spine. You can wriggle around a little bit. If you're feeling like me, a little bit heavy and stiff in the shoulders, have a little bit of a shake, a little bit of a roll around. Until you're ready to really settle in, maybe with your eyes closed. And taking these first few moments as you land, as you come into this special place that you've chosen to find tonight. Just allow yourself to notice how at the end of this week you're feeling right now. I want to keep the words I speak tonight quite spacious, quite simple. So that each one of us has the space and the time to simply melt into being. And so now as you're sitting here, just coming to feel the support beneath you. So you can really begin to release through the hips. Release through the inner thighs. And soften in the side waist, relax the shoulders. Find a little bit of space in your neck. Then inviting softness into the tissues of your face. And without trying to change anything or search for anything in particular, can you feel yourself breathing? Rather, where do you feel the breath? And as you sit simply here with the breath, do you notice any restriction? Do you notice that somewhere in your mind and body, you get in the way of yourself, you get in the way of a stream of a natural breath and all good if you don't.
And how much can you soften all the tissues inside your mouth so that you let go through the upper palate? The gums and the tongue. And when I come to sit like this, sometimes it feels like the emotions, the tiredness, sometimes the joy or the anxiety of the week come like a wash, it's like washes, waves of feeling just through simply closing my eyes and observing. I suppose the question I want to ask you to take with you through the practice is how receptive do you feel? How receptive do you feel to what's going on inside and outside of you? And that can be a light question, a lightness to how receptive do you feel? And you have the choice of staying and breathing naturally, or if you would like to introduce a gentle Ujjayi breath, bring that gentle constriction to the back of your throat so that you have the sound of the ocean rasping over the back of your throat. You can feel it at the back of your nose. And the trick with Ujjayi is to continue with that little constriction, that little focus, at the same time as a complete softness around the face and the throat. I'm going to leave you for a few rounds of breath to feel the Ujjayi washing you through the waves of the ocean washing you through tonight. And then if you'd like to open your eyes and you have a choice of continuing this Ujjayi breath throughout the practice, it's not for everybody. Some people love it because it takes you really deep into yourself, but some people find it's a bit, gives you a bit of a sore throat. Our first yin pose tonight is a wide knee child's pose with a twist. So you might want a blanket for your knees, you might want a blanket for your shoulder. I'll show you what I mean. Let's take a little bit of time to get in. I'm going to take your knees as far apart as they'll go because we're looking to enrich sensation in the inner thighs. I'm going to sit back towards your heels. I'm going to walk out your left arm and then take the right arm underneath it so that you can come down on the right shoulder and the side of your head. Now, if that's not going to happen, you just can't rest the shoulder and the head down. That is where you bring a blanket. You take the pressure off. And we're going to stay for between three and four minutes here. It's always fine in the first minute to move around and to find your pose. And you'll immediately probably begin to feel a certain weight down through the right shoulder. 
can you release into that? And then with your left hand, you have a choice. You can walk it out and around to the right hand side to give you a bit of a stretch in that left arm. But I really like to sweep my left arm over the lower back, reaching for the top of the right thigh. So you get a little bit of a twist, a little bit of work in the thoracic spine and the left shoulder here too. And I'm going to leave you now to settle into this pose with the Ujjayi breath if you'd like to, or with a just a natural breath of your choice. And please don't tolerate any pain. Bolster yourself up, cushion yourself up so that you can find some kind of soothing comfort. As you drop into this pose. You drop your attention into the breath. The sequence today is going to target both the upper and lower body, which is really lovely because a lot of yin doesn't do a lot to the upper body. Can you feel your skin now? Can you feel your skin breathing? And you come into your final minute. Keep deepening the breath and releasing any residual tension on the exhalation. Breathe. And taking three final, slightly deeper breaths. And then one final full breath in. And as you breathe out, bring your left hand down close to your face. Very gently push yourself up. So don't be in a hurry here. And then coming to sit on your heels, maybe even bring your knees together as you feel the residue, the rebound. All we're going to do is take that to the other side. So knees wide apart. You take your right arm forwards. You thread the left arm under, as far under as you can towards the right armpit, so that you can settle down into that left shoulder, the side of your head. Remembering you can always place a blanket or a cushion here. And deciding what you'd like to do with your right arm. Remembering that the invitation is to stay very close to that Ujjayi breath, if that works for you.
And when we practice around the quality of receptivity, it's really a practice of cleanliness. It's a practice whereby we clean away some of the debris, some of the muck that just blocks our vision, blocks our sense of the world. And there's definitely a lot of that around at the moment. And when we just come to the breath, when we just come to the intensity, whether it's delicious or uncomfortable, of physical sensation. It's an act of purity. The cleaning the veil from the window. The window into our inner selves, but also the window of our perception outwards. And I'm not talking about pushing things away that you think you shouldn't be thinking about. Just let everything be there. But then keep coming back to a sense of the skin and the body breathing. And soften. Where are you holding on? Where can you melt and release a little? Breathe. Coming into your final minute already. And taking three final full breaths, maybe a bit deeper this time. And one full breath in. And as you breathe out, just lightly bringing your right hand by your face and bringing yourself up very slow. Very gentle, very sleepy. And again, just sitting back to feel the rebound from that pose. And I just feel it's really good for the upper body, the shoulders. Can you feel the heat of those parts of the body? Maybe a tingling that then redistributes itself around the body. You know, sometimes all these years into teaching yoga, I find myself thinking, isn't it strange to spend so much time practicing and then talking about just feeling into the shoulders, feeling into the arms, feeling the skin. And I don't know, Carly, if you find the same because you teach, but um, there's, there's something strange about the repetition and the constant reminder of of coming back to sensation. And if I don't do it, if I don't teach it, I don't practice it, it definitely changes life. Definitely changes. Um, we're gonna come down onto our bellies before I just keep talking. <laughs> definitely changes the, the receptivity and awareness of life force. 
So we're going to come into a sphinx, lovely simple pose, just to gently um, compress the lumbar spine down here. If you are really bony over the front of your pelvis, you might want to place a blanket down to lie on so you're really comfortable here. And your elbows are underneath your shoulders, maybe palms together. If this is already too much for your lower back and you have a little twinge going on, then just take your elbows out and come down a notch. We are going to, in about three minutes, have the opportunity of coming to seal pose. So you will come up higher if you want. So for now, stay in sphinx or lower. And I'm going to give you a suggestion to direct the breath if you'd like to, but you don't have to do any of these things. You can keep it as simple as you like. So we're going to direct the breath from the heart space down to the pelvic floor on the inhale. So you draw the breath down, maybe still Ujjayi. And you can pause when you're down there and then allow the breath out to bounce a little up off the pelvic floor and then come up back to the heart. And you soften into this sphinx, allowing the shoulders to melt, the jaw to relax, the eyes to soften. And feel your skin as your whole body breathes. In many ways, the simplest of practices. How can we really know or have a chance to notice how we observe if we don't find stillness? from which to look at how we receive sensation, sound, the air around us. Breathe, maybe still with that direction. And you have a choice now of staying where you are or of coming down a notch or coming right up into seal with your hands wider apart, maybe your fingers pointing out a little bit. Imagine the flippers of a seal. And you have a choice. You could keep your chin into your chest or maybe you feel that opening out of the throat a little, taking your head back. But don't do anything that feels a strain. And some of you will find this just too much on the lower back, in which case come down. Don't push it. There should be no pain. And then come back into that direction of the breath. We're working with the meridians tonight, which relate to those organs in the body that are involved with purifying the blood. The heart, the lungs, the small intestines.
This is what I mean about cleanliness. And receptivity. Stay close to the breath. might even feel your heart pumping blood around your body. And this constant transmission across the membranes of your veins, oxygen, carbon dioxide, but a whole range of other nutrients, substances. Some of which nourish us and some of which need to be eliminated. Coming into your final minute, whichever pose you're in. It's a lot of work on the inside of the arms and around the chest in this practice. The lung and the heart meridians or chi lines, energy lines. And taking three full breaths in and out, maybe a bit deeper. And when you take your final exhalation, now it is time to come down and it's a long time to have compressed the lumbar spine. So you will feel this now. Bring your hands under your forehead. And take a couple of breaths, just inflating your belly against the mat to feel the space in the lower back. And you could stay exactly where you are, or it's quite soothing, quite nice to come into flapping fish, where you bring your right knee as far up towards the armpit as feels right for you, looking to the right and then just soften into the right hip and the lower back here, just for a few breaths, not for long. And we feel the whole body breathing. From your fingertips to your toes, feel your skin. And then we'll change that flapping fish to the other side. So you straighten the right leg back out, look to the left and bring your left knee up towards the armpit and then just settle here for a few breaths. And it would be normal to feel lots of tension. It's not that you just do a pose and it all eliminates, of course not. But just by noticing, maybe you begin to soften around the edges of where you're holding tightness. And that can be emotional. My goodness, we've all got a lot to deal with at the minute, all of us in different ways. And then straightening out the left leg. And sliding your hands down by your ribs. And we're going to very slowly, very gently lift all fours. And then come back into a brief pose of the child. Sit back towards your knees. And this is where you might really feel your lower back. You can rest your forehead on your hands, maybe in a little tower. 
and breathe softness into the back body now. Just a few more moments here. And then if you'd like to just come to sit on your heels again. Spine straight to feel the after effects so far. And we're going to continue with a pose for the upper body. So it's called quarter dog. And this for some people will feel like a lot of pressure on the knees. So do maybe cushion your knees and take the left forearm across the mat with your hips right over the knees. So you don't want to be pulling back. You don't want to be leaning forwards. You want your thighs to be perpendicular. And then you walk your right arm out. You walk, walk, walk. You begin to feel a little pulling out of the shoulder. Take a breath in and then draw the shoulder back in. Lower the forearm down. Lower your head. And your head could be on your arm or on either side of it on the floor. And I immediately feel sensation right under my the upper arm on the right hand side, right into the armpit. I don't know about you. And then you can melt your heart in this pose as well as feeling it in the side. And so you have your Ujjayi breath. Maybe you've taken on the direction of the breath, breathing in from the heart to the pelvic floor and out, coming back up again. Maybe just to add more focus, you'd like to bring a count in. I like to count to five, but you find a count that works for you. Always pausing at the top and the bottom of the count. Sometimes it's nice just to tug your bottom back towards your heels to get a little bit more sensation up here, up the right side of the ribs, the arm. Breathe. Great, great practice for upper body tension. Keep melting, keep breathing. This is really time just for you. Just for you to take the time to feel, the time to receive life around you. The time to observe. Doesn't matter if you spent your day like a headless chicken, a little bit of projection maybe. This is a time to find that stillness. Drink from that deep well. You're coming into one more minute here. And if the sensation becomes really intense, as long as it's not sharp pain, 
take your attention there and go right into it. Go right into the heart of it. Let it overwhelm you. Let it take you. And taking three deep breaths. It's quite a long time we've stayed here, four minutes. It's quite long for this pose, so it's bound to feel intense. Take one more full breath in and a long breath out. And then slide your sitting bones back to your heels and slowly come up. And now feel the rebound. It's the best bit. And then we take that quarter dog or heart melting pose to the other side. Hips over the knees, take the right arm across. Walk the left fingers out. Walk, 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 inhale and exhale. Draw that arm bone back into the shoulder socket before you lower your forearm down and your head either to the arm or to the floor on either side. And settle into a place, an edge where you're able to stay. You know how long it's for. And you know you can set all thoughts, all emotions free to be here. Don't banish anything from your practice. It can all be held within this space of awareness. And bring yourself back to that rhythm of the breath, the direction, the count. Maybe a little tug of your sitting bones towards your heels and then settle in. And feel the whole of your skin alive with the breath, alive with sensation. It's as simple as that. Receiving and giving, receiving and giving. You do it with the breath every second. Every pump of the heart, all the absorption in the lungs and the small intestine. Stay close. How soft and relaxed are you in the jaw? Maybe you're clenching a little there. You're coming into your final minute, my lovelies. Can you melt your heart a little bit more? Feel the back of the ribs. Letting go. Like a dissolving of the week's tension. Just let it dissolve into the mat, into the earth. It can take it.
and taking three final breaths, really deep and full. After your final exhalation, sliding your way back, nice and slow. And I can really feel my arms and shoulders now. I don't know about you. Might want to take a little bit of a roll in one direction and then the other. And then just sitting for a moment to feel aware of the atmosphere in your room. Maybe you're with somebody, maybe you're with a dog or a cat. Maybe you have some lovely music playing. And we're going to come into another quite different pose, lateral dragonfly. So um, I think it'd be quite nice. I'm going to sit up on, the, on a blanket here. You can sit up as high as you like. You can take your legs as far apart as they'll go. And I think it was last week we did this and I gave you two or three options for lateral dragonfly. So I'm gonna just show you them in succession and then you can experiment and choose with the ones, choose the one you want to do. So we're going to come down over the left leg first, looking for a, a lateral stretch, a side stretch on the right, pretty much like that. And some of you will get the best sensation in the legs by having both legs out wide. If you're getting any slumping in the lower back at all, then you just bend your knees up a little bit. And some of you might actually find it better to have the right foot in as you come over. It's more like a lateral butterfly, half butterfly. And some of you, might find it more interesting to bring the right foot out behind you. Just gives you more interesting sensation in the right hip. I'm going to just take the neutral two straight legs. And it's also really nice here if you've got a block or a cushion to place it inside the left leg so that you can just rest, or you could use a bolster. So you can rest your left forearm down Maybe you're going to rest your head in your hand. And then look over your right shoulder. Just draw the right shoulder away. And breathe and lift up the right arm. And breathe out. Bring the right arm over and feel immediately quite a lot going on in the right side of the body. And three minutes is quite a long time in this pose. Absolutely fine to take your hand behind your head. So you find to rest your head in your left hand, as I said. It's an intense pose and it's so good to open up the side body that it's so good for the breath. Are you staying with your count? Are you staying with your direction? Are you still breathing your ujjayi? Stay very, very close to sensation. Where are you gripping now? And what stories might your mind be weaving about sensation? Like you might not want it anymore, or how long is this gonna last? And what happens if you just drop right into the intensity of it, knowing that it won't last for too long?
Got one more minute, in fact. Breathe. And soften for the final 30 seconds, maybe deepening your breath. Still a lot going on in the arm, the upper body here. And taking a full, full breath in. And then as you breathe out, place your right hand softly down into the, onto the floor in front of you. Gently, gently push yourself up. Oh, I found that really intense. Don't know about you. Let's take a moment before we take that to the other side. If you had a brick or a bolster inside the left leg, now bring it inside the right so you know you're going to take the right forearm down. Whatever you did with your right leg, you do it with the left. So maybe both legs are out. Maybe you're bending the left knee. Maybe you're taking your left foot out behind you. Like I said, I'm staying neutral. Resting the right arm down on the, on the brick or straight on the floor. And just spin a moment to look over your left shoulder. Lift up the left arm, inhale. And exhale, the arm comes over. And I should have said that your skull, your head, keeps in line with your spine. You try not to rock it forwards. You try and keep it in line with the spine. Not so easy. And then come into yourself. And what do you notice? What do you observe? And you can always rest your head on your right hand if that feels better. You just really don't want to strain your neck. Drop in, drop right in. And feel your skin. Breathe. And I know it's intense. I find this very intense myself. Can you drop a little deeper? And you're in your final minute already. Breathe. Final 30 seconds, maybe you deepen the breath a little. Take a full breath in and as you breathe out, you might feel quite welcome now just to drop the left hand down and push yourself up ever so slowly. Hmm. 
Wow, it's like a massage, isn't it? Quite an intense massage. Take a moment to just simply absorb the after effects. Do you feel the warmth now in the parts of the body you've been stimulating? How's your breath? If you'd like to take your hands behind you and just bend up your knees, feet out in front of you, quite wide apart. So you can just take a few windshield wipers, ever so slow, ever so melty. This is just a counterpose to release any residual tension in the pelvis. This is one of my favourite yin sequences, that a version of which I've done with Esther Eckhart, and it always leaves me feeling very unblocked, very um, almost like losing a layer of skin, but in the best possible way. I'd love to know how it leaves you feeling. It's like the sun shines bright, the air feels crisper, everything feels more vital. Okay, we're going to take a very simple forward fold. If you'd like to possibly sit up on something, possibly have straight legs, possibly bent knees, possibly a bolster under your knees, whatever you need to be able to release forwards with the pelvis. And then take a full breath in, feeling that lightness of the upper body maybe now. And then just simply surrender. Allow the force of gravity to take you on a little trip here. Still with that direction and the count of the breath, if you find that helpful. Some of you might have a, a block under your head, a bolster over your knees. Sometimes I just like to not to practice with too many props and simply allow my body and gravity to do the work. and drop in. And soften, can you feel that light pulse as your body softens and surrenders? Opening your skin to the evening, to the sounds, to the sensations, to the warmth, to the coolness. Breathe. I forgot to put the timer on. Breathe and drop. This is a pose in which sometimes it's quite nice to extend the out breaths. You can really follow the out breath as it fades away into the space around you. 
for the next breath in interrupts that space. Let go. And you have one more minute here. Is there anywhere that you can let go a little bit more? Drop a little bit deeper. I'm taking three final breaths, maybe a little deeper. And one full breath in and a really long breath out. I want you to engage your abdominal muscles a little bit to support the spine as you come up slow. Making sure you bring your head up last. And now just take a moment to feel as your skull perches on the tip of your spine. And breathe here. And then a brief counter pose again. You take your hands behind you. You take your feet under your knees. So they're not too far apart this time. And then on an inhale, push through your feet and your hands and lift up. So you're looking to be horizontal with the floor. Lift the sideways, lift the hips. Keep your chin into your chest and take three breaths. Take one more breath in and then gently release down. So the next pose is definitely not for everybody. And in fact, it's not for me, um, but I can demonstrate it and then I'm going to come out of it. Um, what we've just, what we just did was a, it's called caterpillar. It's a full forward fold and a more intense, in fact, the most thorough or intense forward fold is in fact a snail pose. Um, if you have any issues with your eyes at all, any pressure in your eyes, this is really not a good idea. It's a bit like doing a headstand in terms of the pressure it, it brings into the eyes. Or if you have any um, issues with your neck, please don't do it either. And the, the alternative, which I'll show you first, is to simply do the pose we've just done, in fact. It's absolutely fine. That's what I'm going to do. We're still rounding the spine, which is what we want to do. Snail pose, you could actually use a bolster or something for this behind you, is where you, you start on your back and you lift your bottom off the floor. So it's like you're coming into a shoulder stand. You come as far up onto your shoulders as possible. And then you drop your knees around by your ears. If you're not using any props at all, your feet will be on the floor. You take your hands and your forearms over your lower legs, maybe for a bit more pressure. A slightly easier version is what I'm doing here is to rest your ankles, your forelegs on something. You could even rest them up on a chair if you wanted to. And then you settle in. Karnipadasana is what it's called in Hatha Yoga. And it's a really intense forward fold. Please, this is, I can't, I'm very cautious about this pose because of the neck. So if you feel any risk at all, 
I'd much, much rather you didn't do it. And you don't move your head from side to side in this pose. And you might prefer to take the less controversial pose, which is caterpillar, which is what I'm doing. And we'll stay for four minutes. And if you feel any, if you feel it's too intense, anything's not quite right, please slowly come out of the pose. And settle back into your breath. If you are in snare, it's one of the best ways of really, really massaging and opening out the whole of the back. It's wonderful for the flexibility of the spine as well. Breathe. Stay close. Stay very, very intimate with all the sensations, whether it's really quite intense or not. As long as there's no pain in your neck, please, please take care. And soften and relinquish control. Allowing sensation to take you. Breathe. coming into one more minute and I know for those of you in snail this might feel really intense please come out if you need to Final 30 seconds. Feel your skin. Feel the body breathing wherever you are. Now, if you are in a caterpillar like me, again, just very slowly lifting yourself back up. If you're in a snail, I want you to listen carefully because I want you to come out really carefully. So you take your hands to your lower back and still curled in on yourself, begin to come back bone by bone and lift your head, lift your head until you drop your feet to the floor. And then you can cradle your head in your hands. And then we all come to lying flat. And those of you who are in snail might find it quite hard to lie flat immediately. So really take your time. We've got time. This is the pose where I fully understood Paul Grilly's words that yin yoga is about pulling your bones apart. Why we do that, I really don't know. 
I do know, but it's quite an odd, it is quite an odd thing to want to do. But we are looking for that space. So how does your skeleton feel right now? Maybe you're ready to slide your feet away. And there's even in caterpillar, it also has a similar effect. It'll take a while to absorb. And there can be quite a fizzy feeling, I think, after that pose. Can you really drop into your bones and drop through the floor? Feel your body sinking here, just for a few moments before we take two more poses. And it's not a poetry fest tonight. I've been reading a lot of poetry recently and tonight it's just simplicity. Opening to life. Not blocking it, not veiling it. And a really lovely counterpose to either of those forward folds is a fish pose. And we're going to take a version of fish by coming up to sitting first of all with your legs out in front of you. And then taking your forearms behind you so you can rest on your forearms. Some of you might like to have your legs um, outstretched, but it might be nice to bring a little bit of a hip opener here by taking the knees out the soles of the feet together. And going to bring your attention behind the ribs in between the shoulder blades and then begin to push up. So if you think we've been curled in, our, in on ourselves and now we're giving more space to the lungs or opening out the front of the chest. And it's completely up to you in terms of what you do with your chin. It might be that you protect your neck by keeping your neck chin in, or maybe you can find your trapezius muscle and rest your head back, opening the throat. You choose, but please don't strain the neck. Head is a heavy thing. And then breathe. Still breathing, Ujjayi maybe, maybe you've let that go now. Still breathing with that direction of the breath and maybe the count. Or maybe you've let all of that go and that's fine. Never hold your head back longer than feels right for you. Soften the skin of your face, your lips, your eyelids, skin around your nostrils. We come into one more minute in this pose. Stay close, stay close to the breath. Keep lifting the chest, opening the heart space. And taking three more full breaths. And 
And after your final exhalation, gently bring your knees together. Slide your feet away. And it's time to come down to lying on your back. Taking a moment to feel the whole body extended before we take a final twist. We don't need to come into it yet. Take a while to settle. What do you notice now? So for the twists, we're only going to take the twist for three minutes on each side. And I want you to chew again, like all the poses, choose the variation that works for you. So if you feel like you've done enough to your body and you want to keep this the most gentle, the, the most soft, you're going to simply bend your knees up with the feet to the floor and rock both knees to the left arms are out in a t-shape and take your eyes to the right. If you wanted to take a slightly more intense version you'd lift your feet off the floor, knees in towards you, drop your knees to the left, eyes to the right. The most intense version is when we wrap the right leg over the left so if you want to try that you wrap the right leg over, maybe take the foot behind the lower leg. And then you drop the left foot to the floor and you push into that foot to just take your hips over to the right a little. Just gonna give you a bit more space. And then you come over. And this won't be for everybody. This is much, much um, kind of tighter corkscrew twist here. And if you wanted to bring a little bit more sensation into the right arm, you could lift it up close by your ear. You could rest it on a bolster or a blanket. You might like to rest your legs on something, on a bolster, on a brick, on a blanket. And then we stay. And we feel a rinsing through the body now. You can drop the ujjayi, drop the direction and the count and just feel the waves of a natural breath. A real softness in the belly. Can you let go a bit more? Just let go. Keep dropping, keep melting. Keep breathing, whole body breathing in waves. We have about another 45 seconds here. Can really release the hips and the pelvis. Can you feel them becoming quite heavy?
If you'd like to bring your head back to neutral first, if you have your legs entangled, just release them and then we bring up the right knee, place the foot down, bring up the left knee, place the foot down. And then slide both legs away just to feel the whole body before we take twisted roots to the other side. Whatever version you did on that side, you do that version on the other side. So if you're going to take the simple version, start with your feet on the floor. The next version, bring your knees in. The most intense version, wrapping the left leg over the right, maybe taking the foot behind. You take your right foot down and you press into your right foot, shift your hips over to the left, then drop the knees down. And your gaze goes to the left. Maybe if you want more sensation in the arm, you lift the left arm close to your ear. Maybe you prop up your legs with a block or a blanket. And you drop in and you release. and let go. And breathe freely. Where might you be resisting? Total surrender in this pose. Breathe. Breathe. You have one more minute here. Really melting into the hips, the left shoulder. Let go. You bring your head back to neutral. Untangle your legs if they're tangled. And bring the left knee up first, just dropping the foot down on the floor, and then bringing the right knee, dropping the foot on the floor. And take a moment here in constructive rest with both knees bent just to allow the whole of the spine to neutralize, feeling both shoulders relaxed. And then it's Shavasana, hooray! So if you have a blanket, maybe cover yourselves with a blanket. Maybe you want to bolster under your knees. And 
this is the time to simply, although we've been doing this throughout the practice, now in the simplicity of Shavasana and the surrender of Shavasana, we have the full opportunity to sense, to feel, to receive, absorb all sensation. I'm going to join you. If I fall asleep, I'm really sorry. I'm sure I won't. But if I do, then have a lovely evening, everybody. And you have a choice now. You might like to stay lying exactly as you are. You might like to bring yourself to a meditation seat to finish the practice. No pressure there. And if you do, just finding a comfortable seat so you can free the spine up out of the pelvis. Taking these final few moments of your practice to 
Do what you've been doing since the beginning, which is to breathe and sense. Inwardly, outwardly. The whole of your skin boundary, vital, alive, receptive. All of your sense organs, alive and receptive. Live and receptive to the stillness, the silence. And you may like to remain in the meditation seat or in Shavasana further into your evening. You may like to take some slightly deeper breaths. Maybe rub the palms of your hands together to create heat. To then palm over your eyes. Feel the warmth. Maybe open your eyes into the darkness of your palms and begin to slide the fingertips down, allowing the light to come through to your eyes. If you're sitting, your hands come together at the heart space. Namaste, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you, I hope you like that. I hope you like it as much as I do. Do give me feedback, let me know.